السلام عليك يا أمين الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين Just before the event of Ghadir, so the year prior to that, Imam Amir al had been sent by the Holy Prophet Islam on a deputation to Yemen. Um, at that time, Imam Amir al had dealt with certain people in that way in Yemen, where some people had complaints about the way that he had dealt. When they complained to the Holy Prophet Islam, the Holy Prophet said, You should deal with Imam Amir al directly, and whatever he's done, I agree and I support him in whatever he has done. So some people make this argument that because there was this uh, disagreement or people were not happy with him during his deputation in Yemen, this is why the Holy Prophet Islam made this announcement al Qadir. This is easily dismissed as a point because of the ayat of Quran which is revealed regarding the events of Qadir. So for example, first of all the ayat Surah 5 verse 67 which is revealed saying Ya Rasulullah you have to uh, deliver that which has already been revealed to you if you don't deliver it it's as if you didn't deliver the message at all that means that whatever is being announced at the day of Ghadir is not some little misunderstanding that's being clarified it's something very significant very important very uh, real in terms of having an effect on the whole Ummah number one number two after the Holy Prophet Islam makes this announcement and he says that Ali is the Mawla of all the believers after me, the first person to congratulate is the second Khalifa who says that congratulations to you, O son of Abu Talib. Today you've become the Mawla of all the believing men and women. That means that it's not referring to friendship. This congratulations in itself is an indication that it's something to do with superiority and authority that's being congratulated. You will not congratulate, oh, you, congratulations, you became this person's friend. It doesn't make any sense. Number three, the person who came and he asked the Prophet whether he had appointed Imam Ali from Allah or from his own self was clear that this is to do with succession and to do with authority and not to do with friendship. Otherwise, he would not have asked this question. There was no reason for him to bring any objections. Number four, as I said, when people pledged their allegiance, they were also very clear about what was going on. After that, when Imam Aminul Mu'min comes into Medina and then the people, the Khilafat is usurped from him, he goes round to all the houses in Medina of the Mahajirin Ansar and he knocks on the doors and he asks them that have you forgotten what happened at Khadir? And they all say that no we remember but we're too scared to speak out. If a Ghadir was nothing to do with succession, then he would have said, Ya Ali, that was just a misunderstanding, that was just a little issue that had been created, why are you referring to Ghadir when it's to do with succession? So all of these points are, make it very clear that uh, to say that it was just a little misunderstanding and that was being clarified and this is what the Holy Prophet was doing is a disingenuous way of uh, sidestepping the actual reality and importance and significance and superiority of Ghadir uh, and of Imam Amir al Mu'min as a whole. And it's indeed acceptable intellectually because one thing that we often invite people to reflect upon is that in our day to day lives, when people have businesses, when they have organizations, when they come to the end of their life, they start thinking about who will run it after them. They start thinking about who will ensure that they continue whatever they have set out especially if they care about it, especially if they have a strong uh, affinity towards it and they think it's going to even grow or it's beneficial. It's very unlikely that they will say, you know, I'm not worried about what's going to happen. You decide after me and they'll just you know, leave it as that. And that's very 
normal human behavior to make sure we appoint people to run the affairs when we're not there. In fact, we do it when we are away on a trip, for example, or when, when we retire, for example, from a particular duty or responsibility. There's somebody who must step in and continue our work. Similarly, it can be therefore understood that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet, O Messenger, you must declare this to the people because without this declaration to ensure somebody looks after the religion after you and is the best person after you to do this, then it will all go completely uh, haywire. It will not necessarily fulfill the objective that the religion will not continue to expand, it will not continue to be uh, achieve, uh, received by the people and uh, it will not guide mankind. Therefore, intellectually is accepted. Similarly, it's accepted through the countless narrations that point to the incident of Ghadir as the cause of the revelation of these verses. In Surah 5, ayah number 3, the tafsir of Taqrib al-Qur'an lil-Adhan by Ayatollah Shirazi, he mentions the tafsir of this ayah. He says, this day, which means the day of Ghadir, I have perfected for you your religion, which means I have appointed Ali, peace be upon him, after the Holy Prophet as a vicegerent, as a Khalifa, and completed my favor upon you. This favor was not only the favor of Islam. Islam is the first thing, correct, the Shahadatain. But we also have the third shahada, Ashhadu Anna Aliyan Waliullah. I bear witness that Ali is the vicegerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ni'mati, when he says ni'mati, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, when I've completed my favor, is the ni'mah of the wilayah. The favor, the grace of the leadership of Ali alayhi salam the Imam of the Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. This is the great grace and na'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is to make you uh, a pure uh, a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you also need Iman. So the na'am of Allah, the grace of Allah, is the Iman, is the faith in the wilayah of Amir al-Mu'minin, peace be upon him. That's very important. We shouldn't stop up to only the two shahadatain. Yes, the, the shahadatain will stop us of being non-believers. Will make us pure, tahir, as, as a Muslim. But we also have to, to proceed to the level of the Iman by submitting to the wilay of Ali alayhi salam and his pure family as well. Then the ayah says, and approved for you Islam as religion. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ So Allah is pleased when you reach the stage of the wilayah believing in the Imam of Ahl al-Bayt the Imam of Ahl al-Bayt So Allah is pleased when the Muslim submits to the wilayah and the vice-gerency and the khilafah and the imamah and the leadership of Ali alayhi salam وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ He becomes pleased in other words, if I stop up to the second shahada and I ignore the Imam of Ahl bayt peace be upon them all, it means that Allah won't be satisfied, won't be pleased with this Islam, which is a, an incomplete Islam. The complete Islam, and that's why Allah says in the beginning of the ayah, اَلْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ I completed your religion, perfected your religion with the wilayah of Ali alayhi salam, with his appointment of the imam, of the leadership of the Prophet Without it, Islam is incomplete, imperfect, and God forbid that might uh, lead that person to the hellfire. So, um, the whole Ghadi sermon, if you look at it, it's very, very hard to misinterpret or to um, misunderstand the context of the situation 
and what Rasulullah SAW is trying to actually like declare. For those people who think that uh, Ghadir wasn't about the establishment of a successor or the declaration of Wilaya, they say that, oh, it was about clarifying the status of uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib amongst the Sahaba and to make sure that people understood his status and to make sure uh, that people understood that he was uh, a friend of Rasulullah and not an enemy of Islam. I think the Ghadir sermon is very clear. The fact that Rasulullah starts off with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, talking about the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then talking about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has um, ordered him to give this sermon and to announce his successor. The fact that he talks about how Ali ibn Abi Talib is the successor and this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that he talks about giving allegiance upon uh, to uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, is like giving allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. The fact that Rasulullah mentions the hypocrites in the Quran, he mentions the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. And, and then finally, Rasulullah to dictate and narrate to the people to repeat after me what I'm saying and pledging allegiance to Ali ibn Abi Talib as, as a whole community, as a whole ummah. <laughs> there is no room for misinterpretation or misunderstanding the context. The context is clear that this was to do with the succession after Rasulullah This The whole uh, Ghadir sermon was to declare the successorship, to declare the new leader of the Ummah. And also, if you were not to accept and you weren't to acknowledge and you were to go and do your own thing, what the consequences were? Uh, if it was just a sermon of Ghadir uh, and stand three hours standing in the heat, then yes, it was possible for somebody to make this argument that maybe some but he, because of the uh, heat, because of the fact they were standing for so long, they misinterpreted or they didn't understand it properly or they uh, didn't get what the Holy Prophet was trying to say, what the meaning would have been, if it was just that. However, after the sermon, for three days, when there's a gathering of people and each one of them is coming and they are doing salam, assalamu alaikum ya Amir al Mu'mineen, pledging allegiance to Imam Amir al Mu'mineen in that very specific way. And it's not just one or two or a couple of people who do this. Every single person who's there, they all come, including the women, they all come and they pledge allegiance to, the, to, the, to Imam Amir al Mu'mineen in that way. That shows that it's not something that is uh, uh, was that they would not have understood or they didn't know or they didn't get understand. If they hadn't understood it until that point, then there was no doubt after that that this is the reason why the Holy Prophet of Islam brought them there, stopped them there, made them listen to the sermon, and then took each one of them to pledge allegiance to Imam Amirul Mu'min Salam in that specific way, um, and. It, of course, nobody afterwards, after pledging allegiance, asks this question or says that, Ya Rasulullah, what did you mean? Was it this? We didn't understand. It wasn't clear for us. Can you explain it further? There's no uh, account of that ever happening. There is a lot of discussion today to say that this whole event was a announcement of the friendship of the Prophet with Commander of the Faithful. And this is because the word Mawla and Wali in Arabic has so many different meanings, 19 some say, and one of them is friendship. One of them is to, uh, to be a servant or master and so on and so forth. But of course, the way we know wh what it actually means is by looking at the context. And the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, his holy progeny, actually starts off by saying, I have complete authority over all of you. This is found in Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal and on Shia source. He doesn't start off immediately by saying, Man kunta mawla fahada aliyun mawla. He actually says to people, I am a, a person with that authority over you, as the Quran says. So he sets the scene. He allows people to understand what this wilaya actually refers to. So if we, if we look at the conclusion of the event of Ghadir, so 
the Holy Prophet Islam makes this announcement and he um, everybody is now ordered after the announcement to come and offer allegiance to Imam Amir al-Mu'min this takes three days uh, obviously a hundred thousand people coming one by one to offer allegiance including the women who were ordered for the first time uh, they had to offer allegiance so they needed to know how would they do it so a bowl of water was placed and Imam Amir al-Mu'min would place his hand in the water and then the women would come and they would place their hand in the water and that would symbolize the fact that they had made bay'ah on the hand of Imam Amir al-Mu'min After the sermon of the Prophet and announcing the leadership to Ali alayhi salam, there were three ways of the Holy Prophet took bay'ah from the people, the oath of allegiance. Number one, he took it verbally. He said, Alasta awla bikum. They said, Bala, qalu bala. So they said, Yes, we confirm, we affirm that. So he took the bay'ah verbally first. And then he set a tent. For, for three days, Muslims came and gave bay'ah to Ali alayhi salam and the Holy Prophet. Also, the women were provided with a water bucket and they used to put their hands inside the, the, the water bucket and then the Imam comes later on and he puts his hands inside the water as well as a means of bay'ah with the woman because uh, in the shari Sharia and fiqh it, it is not allowed for the strange woman to shake hand with the str strange men only relatives and wife and daughter and so forth. So the bay'ah with the woman was in this way. Whilst this was happening, uh, there's a person who comes to the Holy Prophet of Islam, Harith ibn Nu'man. And he says to the Holy Prophet of Islam that you uh, told us to pray and you told us to fast, and you told us to go for Hajj, and you told us to give Zakat, and you told us to do all these things, and we did all of them. Now you forced your brother, Ali alayhi salatu salam, onto us. So, uh, is this from Allah, or is it from your own self? The Holy Prophet Islam replies, he says, every single commandment that I gave you, including this one, is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he leaves, or he, he's, as he's leaving, he says that if you're speaking the truth, then may Allah send down punishment on me. And if you are lying, then may Allah send down punishment on you. As soon as he left the area of Ghadir and he got onto his horse, there was a small stone pebble that came down from the heavens and it crushed him and turned him into dust. Uh, verses of Quran were revealed, the opening verses of Surah Al-Ma'arij. Somebody asked, the translation is somebody asked for the punishment of God and he received the punishment of God. And we are told, you know, there's, there's rocks that fell from the heavens and immediately this individual was killed when he challenged the Almighty and when he clearly disbelieved and rejected the truthfulness of the Prophet in which the Prophet of Islam does not speak anything from himself. It's all purity, it's all nobility, it's all haqq, he's ma'asum. When he challenged it before people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed that this man, this ignorant individual was wrong, it was false, and the Prophet of Islam, what he said was absolute truth, and it is something that must be followed. Amongst those who gave bay'ah to Ali alayhi salam on the day of Ghadir, was those who later on um, took over the Khilafah from Ali alayhi salam himself. In other words, they betrayed the Bay'at al-Ghadir, the oath of the allegiance on the day of Ghadir. Amongst them was Umar ibn Khattab who came and he said to Ali, you know, glad tidings that you, you became my master and the master of the Mu'mineen. So 
he gave the bay'ah, he shook the hand, but sadly, you see the history overturns. And as the Quran says that, انقلبتم على أعقابكم You turned on your heels. And they failed to actually implement the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with regard to the khilafah of Imam Amir al-Mu'min Ali alayhi salam. Now, uh, we have Allama Amini says 60 scholars, 6-0, from the Ahl sunnah they actually narrate what happened next. And this, uh, you know, includes the, the, the companions such as Ibn Abbas, Abu Huraira, Zayd ibn Arqam. They all narrate that one of the first things that happened there is that the second Khalifa, Umar ibn Khattab, came and said to the commander of the faithful, he said to him, Bakhin, Bakhin, laka ya Ali, asbahta mawlai wa mawla kulli mu'minin wa mu'mina. Congratulations, congratulations to you, Ali. You have become my mawla and the mawla of every believing man and woman. Yes. Now, this is certainly not meaning that he said you have become my friend and the friend of every believing man and woman. Again, the context is that the Prophet has identified what the word mawla in reality means. Allam al-Amini, in his book, Al-Ghadir, which are now over nine volumes of, of the Ghadir book, he had collected all the sources of the non-Shia, i.e. the Ahl-Sunnah books, who narrate the event of Ghadir. And they narrate also this specific uh, text, Man kuntu mawlah fahadha ali mawlah, or fa'aliun mawlah. So there's some kind of consensus, mutawatar, very frequent and well known by uh, the non-Shia scholars that the event of Ghadir took place, there were more than 110 Sahabi and companions who recorded uh, this event and almost 83 of the Tabi'een and 360 Sunni scholars for the past centuries who recorded um, the event of Ghadir and it could be one of the most authenticated hadith within the Muslim world. Hadith al-Ghadir is one of the well-known hadith and one of the famous hadith within the hadith and a famous event that took place in the history of Islam. An objective analysis of the collection of narrations and hadith that we have in the Muslim world today would bring anybody who sits there with an open mind to the conclusion that the narrations present that point to the incident and the event of Ghadir have reached a level of complete authenticity known as Tawatur. And when we look at scholars who have conducted the research in order to come to this conclusion, we have the example, for, uh, for instance, of uh, Allama Amini. Now, Allama Amini, may Allah bless his soul, he traveled to Egypt, to many parts of the uh, Muslim world, to collect these narrations. And he has 11 volumes known as Al-Ghadir, the collection of the uh, books that uh, group together the narrations. And he has come to the conclusion that uh, the, the incident and the narration of Ghadir is narrated by over 110 companions of the Holy Prophet, uh, 84 of the Tabi'een, those who came after the companions, and he has put down detailed evidence with names and references of 360 scholars from the uh, school of Khilafah from the Ahl Sunnah, uh, detailing how they have narrated that this incident actually happened and what actually occurred on the day itself. Names of companions who have narrated this particular event include Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, ibn Mas'ud, ibn Abbas, Zayd ibn Arqam. Uh, you have scholars such as Fakhruddin al-Razi, Suyuti, uh, and others. Now, when we look at, for example, 
books such as Shawahid al-Tanzil by Hakim al-Hasakani, Sunan ibn Majah, they've given extensive details of what actually happened on the 18th of the Hajj and how the Prophet of Islam, peace and blessings be upon him and holy progeny, uh, made this uh, declaration. Assalamu alaikum.